Guys, welcome back to another episode of Lay Your Brick. This episode, we have Dexter Dunton on. He's a co-owner and creator of Thunder Coffee. He also works with a local brewing company called Drecker. He also has his own pop-up burger shop called Beef Cakes. Dexter's passion is to make shit taste good. It's as simple as that. He is always giving people positive experiences through food and fellowship, and it will always get him excited. He's an entrepreneur and a genuine guy. So please enjoy, and I hope you learn something new. Dexter, I, I appreciate you coming on, and I appreciate getting on here. Um, I wanted to start off by saying that you got a lot of things that I'm very interested in. You got a coffee shop. You got a brewing company, right? Um, yeah. yeah. Well, I, I work I work at Drecker Brewing Company, yeah. Okay. Okay. So you just work for them, right? Or do you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, uh, I work part-time in the tap room. Uh, I recently, well, uh, I guess last year and the year before I did deliveries to Minneapolis for them and, uh, kind of handled some, some of the getting the beer down to the cities, which was a really fun gig because people get pretty stoked about Drecker in Minneapolis. Okay. Um, but yeah, yeah. I worked there part-time slowly stepping off the gas there is as some of my other, other as... passions, uh, build up, you know? Yeah. Yeah. We'll get into that. And then, um, yeah, I mean, I'm just, I'm just excited. I was talking to um, a person, I won't name names or whatever on here, but uh, <laughs> talking to a person at my gym and she suggested you and I figured, well, why not get into it and uh, hit you up and talk about it. So we'll just start off here, um, kind of your background. I mean, let's just get into where, like, where did you start with everything yeah. for born and all that kind of stuff, that good stuff. Yeah. So a little, little background on me. I've lived all around the the U S here. Well, I guess I've made a, made a nice little triangle. I was born in Northeastern Montana, a tiny little town. No one has ever heard of Nashua, Montana is where I spent the first five years of my life. Um, When I was five, my family moved to Oklahoma or no, 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 not Oklahoma. We moved to Florida. Oh, wow. uh, Yeah. We spent some time in Port Charlotte, Florida. I uh, lived through Hurricane Charlie, all that did the whole 13 days without power or whatever it was. That was a fun, crazy experience. No Can't kidding. recommend. Uh, <laughs> after, <laughs> after that, we moved to uh, Paul's Valley, Oklahoma, where I went to high school, started going to college, and then moved from uh, Oklahoma in 2017 to Fargo, North Dakota. And now I reside in West Fargo, North Dakota. And uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of the, the game plan, but I, I really got interested in, uh, in some of the things that, that I'm doing now when I was in Oklahoma, I, uh, I was a barista when I was in college at this place called the perfect blend just down the street from, uh, where most of my classes were spent a lot of time there so much so that they, they offered me a job. They're like, Hey, you might as well get paid to hang out here. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's fair enough. So started doing that in 2015 and just fell head over heels for coffee and uh, for, you know, really crafting a good experience for people and uh, got plugged in with the barista guild in Oklahoma city. I would, I would drive 80 miles from Ada, Oklahoma, which is where I was going to school up to Oklahoma city wow. way too often. I was, I was burning way too much gas money. Um, just driving up there, hanging out at the different cafes, getting to meet people that were in the coffee scene up there. And, uh, yeah, that just made my love for specialty coffee grow way, way more because the people up there were so cool. Like I I was thinking about this the other day, the coolest, the reason why I wanted to be a barista is because all the people that were doing it in Oklahoma city were just the coolest out there. Yeah. Paul Zimmerman. He is one of my idols in the coffee game. That dude was just, you know, when you walked into a room, you're like, this guy, this guy's super cool. Um, it just had that commanding presence and, uh, but like in a super understated way, same for Rachel Apple. She was the roaster at elemental coffee roasters when uh, I was buying coffee from them. And, uh, yeah, no, they were just such cool people to hang around. They always had the best taste in music. They had the coolest tattoos, coolest clothes, you know, it, yeah. it was part of that culture that just really made me want to be a part of it. And seven years later, here I am. I'm like, I'm, I'm in it. <laughs> yeah. That got you into it. That makes sense because you know, when you're surrounded by people that um, 
you know, it sounds like they obviously had a huge impact on you and what you kind of like to do. Right. You found it um, very cool, like everything that they did, you know, so you you grew to it. So I'm sure that helped definitely helped with your, your love for coffee. I was going to say, speaking of culture, I was looking at the companies that you're um, that a, you are a part of and you own, and we'll get into that in Mm -hmm. a second. And then also that you work for, and they all kind of stand by one message that I've kind of found, which is, which is community, like your, your big sense of um, you just really like wanted to create, create something where it brings everybody together. Oh yeah. Yeah. That that's a big driving force for, you know, both Thunder Coffee, which uh, I'm, I'm one of the owners in the, in the head roaster over there um, as well as Drecker Brewing Company is uh, you know, these beverages that bring people together, uh, give people a, re- a reason to gather and, um, you know, a very good one at that mm-hmm. um, and building a space around that and uh, creating events that really make people thrive, I think is, is really the biggest driving factor for both those companies. Yeah. So, uh, you know, why do you think, uh, why do you think that's so important to you? Do you think you learned that yeah. kind of in Oklahoma? You know, you know, I think, I started to learn that in Oklahoma and I people that dive really deeply into niche subjects like coffee or beer or whatever craft uh, service bar bartending, you know, cocktail crafting, like people can dive really deep into that. And I definitely did. Um, And, you know, you can kind of become dogmatic about, well, you know, that's not specialty coffee because X, Y, Z. And you can get kind of elitist and all all out of like a a good mindset going in. It's like, no, I want to be the best at this I can. And Mm -hmm. uh, I want to serve people the best thing that I can. But it takes a while for you to learn that that's not necessarily how people deserve to be treated, number one, and uh, how they really want a customer interaction to happen. No one wants to hear the lecture on why, you know, uh, washed processed coffees are, are the coolest thing around or like why I'm really into this natural coffee that I've got right now. Most of the time they just want a good cup of coffee and they want yeah. to go about their day. And that's, that's totally okay too. <laughs> Learning that, you know, is so true. Like what you said, like not every customer wants to hear all of that stuff. So that's, that's gotta yeah. be hard, you know, cause, I, cause I know like with my passions and stuff like that, I, I get really eager and you want to explain it to them because you're hyped up about it. You love it. Yeah. And then, but they just don't understand it sometimes. So that's, yeah. And you know, that, that is one of the big reasons why, uh, you know, building those spaces that are functional for, for people to hang out in at the same time as like create a great experience for them. That's another really big part of what we do. It's, it's funny, you know, first getting into coffee, you think, Oh, I want to serve the best coffee possible. And that's kind of your sole vision. And while that holds with you, you know, building a coffee shop and a coffee company around that, um, it no longer, it becomes less about the coffee and more about making people feel good. And I think that's one of the most important lessons I've learned over the past five years. Yeah. I mean, that that's, it's great because you get to make people feel better. You know, you, yeah. like you said, you get to make them feel good and it's, it's through your coffee shop and it's through the brewing company and um, yeah. you know, yeah, it's, it's just uh it's got to be a really humble feeling, you know, because at the end of the day, you are creating these things, you're getting into it. Um, and you love it, you know, you really mm-hmm. do. And I can see that through that. But then not only that, you are doing it for like a bigger kind of like, you know, like, I don't necessarily want to say purpose, but like a, a bigger thing, because it's, yeah. oh, yeah. it's not about you. It's about creating a space where people can come and hang out and feel better. Well, and, and the fact that people choose to do that is the really humbling experience of it because, I mean, you know, creating anything is a, is a very vulnerable process and there's mm-hmm. always that fear of like, man, what if nobody shows up? And that was, that was my biggest fear for Thunder Coffee's birthday party this year was like, well, we're, we've got all these fun things for people to do. We've got, you know, live music happening at the end of the night. Like, it's going to be good, but what? if nobody, what if nobody wants to hang out with us? You know, that's, that's always the big fear. And then when they do choose to do that, 
um, I just hope I never lose sight of that as, as we go forward, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So let's, let's get into Thunder Coffee. So, yeah. Um, I know this cause I did a little bit of research, but so you started it with your brother and his wife, correct? That is correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Skylar Dutton, my older brother by 14 years and Nicole Steen Dutton. Uh, she, she and Skylar and I got that going in 2017. Wow. Okay. So you've been up and running for a couple of years now. Um, yeah. That's a, that's a crazy sentence to hear someone say it, it doesn't yeah. really feel like it until you hear it, you know? <laughs> yeah. So I'm assuming they kind of share that same love for coffee. Do they, are you more of the fanatic or are they right up there with you? I'm definitely the coffee nerd of the okay. group, but that's not to say that they don't like coffee in their own yeah. way. Um, Skylar really uh, took the plunge into specialty coffee in 2017 there, right before I moved up. And uh, he's, he's grown to love it as well. I would say seven years ago, no chance mm-hmm. he would, he would have ever wanted to open a coffee shop, but it's, it's funny how it'll take a hold of you. And uh, <laughs> before you know it, you're buying all this brewing equipment and trying out new coffees and stuff. Yeah. So what, it's kind of a big question, but I mean, what made you guys get into it? What yeah. kind of pushed you guys over the edge to really be like, okay, let's, let's do this. Cause like you said, it's, it's a big thing and it's scary. What if people don't show up, you know? And yeah. so what, what kind of pushed you over that edge to do it? Some of the biggest motivating factors to start Thunder Coffee, uh, I would say, largest for Skyler was that he was in between jobs at the time. He, uh, and he, he would tell you this too, but he got fired from a couple of different places. And it, that's always a terrifying feeling of like, Oh man, maybe I am unemployable. And th- that definitely wasn't the case. It was just kind of like the, mm-hmm. the storm at the time, but you know, that is always kind of running through your head whenever those happen. And at the same time, he wasn't enjoying working for any of the companies that he was working for, uh, after that. Mm-hmm. And, uh, He's like, well, I might as well be my own boss. How can, how can I be my own boss? At the same time, I was falling head over heels for coffee in Oklahoma. I was attending East Central University studying uh, advertising and public relations. And mm. uh, that was fine. I could have happily finished my degree. Uh, I, loved, I loved the people in my degree and, and the classes I was taking. But uh, I knew I didn't need to for what I wanted to do because I, I – knew I was opening a coffee shop. Yeah. Uh, as soon as I started working in one, I, I knew that's what I wanted to do. And uh, so Skylar called me up in January of 2017. It was like right after the new year. And he's like, I, you, I know you're going to think I'm crazy, but why don't you move up here? And we, we try this out. And I said, okay, he didn't have to twist my arm at all. <laughs> yeah. I, I was like, I will He's like, how about you not enroll for your next semester for the fall semester of uh, 2017 there? Mm -hmm. I was like, bet. (laughs) So packed everything up in my my Chevy Impala as soon as the spring semester ended. Um, at At the end of May there, I drove up to Fargo, North Dakota and crashed on his couch until we got things rolling. Dang, that's awesome. That's really cool. I want to go back to that, that uh, feeling that you were talking about too, how, like when I said it was, uh, you've been open, you've been run up running for a couple of years. Mm-hmm. That's gotta be surreal because even me just sitting here and, and kind of listening to you, it's, it's cr- like you did it. Like you opened a coffee <laughs> shop and it's successful. You know what I mean? Like, that's, that's amazing. Like that's uh, really, that's, really amazing. I mean, it's the, it's the most terrifying part of it too. Cause it feels like it feels like you're never one degree of uh, separation away from failure at the same time. You know, it's mm-hmm. that double-edged sword was like when we first got going, we were doing pour overs and cold brew at the Red River Market and uh, at the Blue Stem Amphitheater. And we were okay. selling all these cups to go. We were, we were mobile only for the first two years. Right. And so we were doing special events, catering and, and all that stuff. The goal then was to open a coffee shop. Right. We started with what we had on hand. We were building up, buying an espresso machine and uh, putting money away to open up a cafe. Mm-hmm. And 2019 got here and boom, we did it, right? We opened the cafe and that was a huge success, uh, you know, personally and professionally. It was like, all right, yeah, we're doing it. Now what? Yeah. And that, that was kind of the, the terrifying thing when that set in was like, 
oh, now we got to keep this going. This, yep. <laughs> this wasn't the end goal. This is really the starting point. So uh, that's been a fun transition of like, all right, how, how do you build a successful cafe, right? You know, what all mm-hmm. goes into that? that? How do you build a, a team of people that, um, you know, really cares about their community and wants to, you know, make an impact in a way more than just a cup of coffee, you know, yeah. air quotes on that. Um, and then how do you grow that additionally and make it into a more sustainable for everyone involved? You know, how do, how do we pay our employees better? How do we pay ourselves better? How do we like really make this into what would feel like a legitimate business? Cause there's yeah. a lot of days walk into work where it's like, I mean, this is my own coffee shop. I'm, I'm doing this. This doesn't, it doesn't feel really real just yeah. yet. Um, there were, there were moments where it felt terrifyingly real, you know, signing a five-year lease is kind of, <laughs> kind of a terrifying experience. And then there's moments where you're like closing down and you're like, is, is this real life? Am I really <laughs> doing this? Or is this, is this still all a dream? Yeah. So, you know, build, building that out and, and growing that has been, has been a fun shift of, of experience, I'd say. <laughs> Yeah, that's got to be, you know, and like, like you said, too, I mean, would you change? I feel like the answer is no, but would you change anything as far as like, let's say you guys had the money or maybe you did have the money. What, what kind of made you guys go mobile? Was it just because it was kind of an easier thing to do then and get your feet on the ground and be literally with the community? Because I would say that would give you that gave you guys, I think, an aspect that people, if they were to come here and they want, they're all about community, but they just open mm-hmm. it, you know, a shop right away. But you guys were in the community you guys were in it you know you guys went to events you yeah you were there you know so i, I think go yeah, ahead yeah i i think that that really did give us more experience than we thought it was gonna give us in all all the best ways right um the reason why we started mobile is because coffee shops are expensive man espresso mm. machines are expensive (laughs) and not just that like rent is hella expensive too so there's all these costs that you know we didn't we we just didn't think we could foot at the time and uh, i'm so glad that that we spent those two years doing mobile events because i got to meet some of the some of my best friends from doing those events as well as um i would like to think that thunder coffee is thought of as like the special event coffee company, you know, the, mm-hmm. a lot of, a lot of special events around town, we're going to be there. You know, uh, my, my pitch for people hiring us at, at like catering events or whatnot was always, you know, if there's a party to be had, we're going to be there. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that that has helped make us successful over here in West Fargo is because, you know, people know that the quality of coffee they're going to get and some of the experience that they're going to get whenever they come into our shop. Yeah. Yeah, I would I would say so. I think that gave you guys an edge that uh that really helped you out. Because like you yeah. said, I mean, you made you made friends, you made connections, you made, you know, just th- that's what it's all about, especially, you know, your message for Thunder Coffee and every and everywhere else. It's like that it's community. It's what you wanted to bring yeah. people together. So, yeah. I admire that. I really do. I really do. Thanks, kid. How do you how do you find the balance because you know, I really know that you're passionate about this, that you love it. And so how how do you think you find the balance between, you know, going to that coffee shop as, as surreal as it is every Mm -hmm. single day, you know, versus, uh, just, you know, life balance. Cause I know that there's a lot of things in my life that I would like put up there, you know, like if, if that was a coffee shop, I imagine that you guys have to be, you know, like you're it, like you're the only, like you guys have to be (laughs) there. You know what I mean? So, yeah. How do you find that balance? Gosh, that's, I mean, that's been a journey in and of itself, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Whenever we first opened the cafe, we had, I think, three baristas in addition to ourselves that uh, were working. I I can't remember if we only had two or if we had three, Um, but not a lot of additional help, right? Mm -hmm. Um, We were there all the time and that, that was good because you know, we were the owners, we wanted to set the tone for the, for the building and, yep. and, you know, the customer experience and, um, kind of be those boots on the floor for the first, you know, year, year and a half. Um, as we added members to the team, we, uh, we found, we found people that, that fit 
perfectly with us and uh, could continue that experience on uh, while we weren't there. And that has been so helpful. Um, I, I can't imagine where we would be at without our team right now, mm-hmm. but um, luckily we were able to find people that fit really well. And that has allowed us to kind of shift our roles from, you know, when we first opened Skylar and I were on bar all week, you know, we didn't have a weekend off for yeah. a significant amount of time. And uh, as we started adding team members, we could kind of dial in what was healthy for us and what, uh, when we needed to be there. And then in 2020, we actually started roasting our own coffee in addition to having a cafe. So that kind of added on a whole other layer of it. And it's a, essentially an entirely different business from yeah. owning a cafe. And uh, I don't think a lot of people realize that whenever <laughs> they, they hear that we roast our own coffee as in addition to having a cafe, it's, I think a lot of people think, Oh, same, same, you know, you got to roast the coffee to brew the coffee. Yeah. But it's a, it's, it's a, an entirely, it's a whole manufacturing process that, um, takes a lot, a lot of time and a lot of skill going into it. So, uh, adding that on kind of hit the reset button for work-life balance to start there. Cause it, it also happened to be March, 2020, whenever we started roasting. So we got, we, we had to work (laughs) the shop a lot. Uh, some of our, some of our staff took that initial, um, quarantine to go home and, uh, Hank, quarantine away with their family mm-hmm. and that was um that made for skylar and i to be in the shop seven days a week yeah 12 hour days no stop and then we decided we wanted to roast coffee in addition to that and so <laughs> i would i we bought this 250 gram roaster less than a half pound was our yield right and uh i would lock myself in the back of our cafe we had, we have this little meeting room, plug that thing in and roast, you know, up until midnight. Um, usually I wouldn't stay later cause I, I knew that my girlfriend wasn't happy with me being at work so much, <laughs> yeah. but you know, we'd open the shop, I'd roast till, you know, midnight, 1am and then, uh, come back the next day, do it all again. And, uh, it took a long time for coffee to taste good out of that machine. <laughs> like I, I must've burnt 50 pounds, a half pound at a time before I really had anything that was remotely drinkable. Wow. Uh, yeah, it, it took a lot of trial and error, but then when the coffee did start tasting good and we started selling that through the drive through cause we were drive through only, uh, at, at this time, yep. you know, middle of March there, uh, April ish. That was a really surreal feeling. Cause it was like, Whoa, people like the coffee that I'm making. Like not only am I brewing it, but, um, they're buying it, brewing it themselves. And they, they're still coming back. Yeah. Um, that was super cool. And then I was like, oh, shoot, we got to roast a lot more of this to keep up. Um, and so that turned into me roasting all day while Skylar and Nicole worked the cafe. And we we're like, we got to we got to scale this up. So we were lucky enough to have made some friends with uh, another roasting company in town that let us borrow some time on their roaster and nice. level our, our production scale up. <laughs> that's awesome yeah there's two there's two things that i wanted to say there one was the i wanted to go well i guess three but um did you ever get sick of that because it's something that you love to do but did you ever did it ever become like i have to i gotta go rinse repeat i had to go do that again and again and again because you had no help you know what i mean like at that time i mean there there were definitely days i would say when Skylar and I were working the cafe. It was less of like, oh shoot, I've got to go brew coffee today. And Skylar would say the same thing. You spend seven days a week with someone 24 yeah. seven, you're going to get sick of them. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So a lot of it was like, just like, oh man, I just need time away from Skylar for like a day or like, I just need, I need some alone. Time. It was never a bummer that I had to work coffee. It was like, man, I've got to be on for yeah. 12 hours today the coffee was like the respite in that, right? Like I got to drink coffee, got to dial in on bar and that was the best part of my day. But it's everything else that like came in, in with that, that, you know, in the middle of a pandemic got to be really taxing. Um, But the coffee part of it was always the 
thing that I got stoked about. Like the fact that I got to play around roasting till midnight, I was like, I was always cheesed on that. I mean, yeah. there were definitely days where it was hard, but whenever you got it right, I think it was, I think it was the feeling of like, uh, it's the same feeling you get when you win a trophy, right? Or like you win, you win a, a game, right? It's like that yeah. endorphin rush of like, I nailed it today and it, this coffee tastes awesome. And I did that, you know, and that, that feeling of achievement just never got old for me. Yeah. Well, I mean, how could it, right? It's like <laughs> you're accomplishing things that you're loving to do. You, you know, and you're, you're starting from scratch. Like, that's the thing, like you said, like people don't understand, like, like it's a, you guys, you bought different equipment for that, you know? Yep. And that was the yep. first thing I was going to say too, is going back to what you said earlier, which was, you know, that coffee shop, getting that shop wasn't the end goal. Like you guys thought it yep. was, but it wasn't the end goal. And like, <laughs> so it's really cool to see that because I, I feel like a lot of people, and that's kind of why I wanted you on. So like other people that are aspiring to do, you know, whatever it may be entrepreneurs, whatever, like yeah. that's not the end goal, but like, so how did you battle those, those, uh, I don't, they're not I'm trying to think of what to call them, but like, yeah. How, yeah. How did you get over those things and be like, okay, this is not the end goal. I realize that now, but now I want to do this without it becoming like taking over your life. Right. Because obviously, yeah. like you said, your girlfriend is not going to be happy with you if you're, <laughs> you know, that that's that whole balance thing. And so yep. uh, that's why we really got into it. But yeah, I mean, how, how exactly did you go about realizing that that wasn't the end goal and then going on from there? Man, any time that there was a big shift like that, because the same thing happened when we opened the cafe or the, um, the roastery and we started mm -hmm. roasting our own coffee and realized, well, we can't just sell our own coffee to ourselves. We need to add wholesale clients. We need to train customers on how to brew coffee. Like mm -hmm. there's all these other things that go into that. Um, a lot of it is just, a lot of reflection and um, mm. redefining what success looks like for you in that season yeah. of your life and uh, realizing that it's okay for goals to change. You know, um, mm -hmm. I think, uh, I think a lot of times um, people with big ideas on, on business or, you know, these vision visionary types, like I would con consider myself, you know, I love, I love coming up with big ideas and figuring out how to crush them. Um, yeah. we get so attached to the idea that we kind of lose the, um, lose the forest for the trees and, uh, being able to get some of that perspective and realize, Hey, I'm a much smaller part in this. And that's totally cool. How can I, how can I be a part of this bigger patchwork of, you know, for me, specialty coffee and, yep. you know, coming, coming to terms with like, it doesn't have to be, I don't have to be in this cafe 24 seven to be successful. It's, it's me making good coffee, teaching people how to make good coffee and, um, you know, providing them with that experience wherever they're at. You're totally right. Not being attached to the outcome. Yep. Right. Yeah. You know, oh yeah. Like Out, outcome ind independence is huge. Cause you know, at the end of the day, you just got to do what you're doing the best that you can do it and yep. kind of hope for the best. That's what I always tell myself too, with, you know, because I mean, I like to like to say that I'm a pretty hard worker. So, you know, at the end of the day, I'm just like, I, it's like, I can only do what I can do. You know what I mean? Like I, I set Absolutely. myself up, I try to do everything that I can. I imagine it's the same way with you, especially, you know, because it's like when you find things like these that you love, it's very hard to like put them down, stop roasting, you know, yeah. <laughs> but you yeah. want to keep going. You want to get better at it. And like, there's a, there's a sense of um, fulfillment in that of trying mm -hmm. to just chasing a goal, chasing a dream, yeah. you know? Um, so are all the flavors at, at Thunder, are they, or flavors, I guess, roast. I don't, I'm not sure mm -hmm. how to put it, but yeah, is it all of, just your guys' stuff now or mm -hmm. okay yeah so we roast all the coffees that we serve in the cafe currently um we've toyed around with the idea of you know bringing other really cool coffee roasters in on like our pour over bar um that and that's something that we still might end up doing but for right now every coffee that you've drank for the last well since probably july of 2020 has been mm -hmm. our coffee um the coffee that i've roasted and, uh, that's a, 
that's a cool thing to say. We've, you know, yeah. served a lot of lattes in the last, last year. And that's, uh, it's really cool to think that I've had a part in every single one of those lattes, whether I was on bar or not. That's gotta be fulfilling. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So to kind of backtrack a little bit, I wanted to know this, which is kind of a big question, but what, what, what does success look like to you? Yeah. Um, I've, I've had to think about what success looks like for me a lot over the past. I, I feel like I've really zoned in on it in the last year and a half, two years. Um, I, I think the pandemic put a lot of things in perspective for a lot of different people. Oh yeah, for sure. And uh, I, I know that's what fed a lot of that um, decision-making for me um, over the last couple of years. But uh, after thinking on it a lot, I really think making shit taste good is my lane. And that's what I want to do for the foreseeable future. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, whether that's coffee or, you know, or beer, or right now I'm really obsessed with burgers. I don't know if you follow my, my beefcakes page. <laughs> yeah. I wanted to talk about that too today. Yeah. Yeah. Um, whether it's burgers, coffee, or beer, you know, like as long as I'm providing a great experience for people, that's, that's what I want to do, you know, and Mm -hmm. for the foreseeable future, that's what I'm going to chase like crazy. (laughs) I I really admire that because, you know, you're not in a, you know, not a lot of people that I talk to are like this, but like, you're, you're not after how much, you know, coffee can I sell? How much coffee can I make? It's, it's Mm -hmm. not about that for you. It's making shit taste good. Like that's so awesome because it's, you're just, I don't know. You're just on the right path no matter what, like (laughs) just doing that, you know, you're on the right path. So that's so cool. I, I, that's, yeah, that's awesome. So if there's anything you want to add else to that, um, to thunder coffee by, by means go for it. I wanted to move to, um, Drecker after that, but if there's anything else you want to say, I mean, yeah, I can't, I, I can't think of anything else um, yeah. about Thunder Coffee. I mean, other, other than the fact that like our team is what makes that all possible, you know, yeah. the, the fact that I get to, um, I, I think about it as playing around on the roaster, even when we're putting out over a hundred pounds a day. Um, <laughs> it's, <Yeah. laughs> it, I still, I still get excited about that. Um but uh, without, without our, our team around us being able to, to do that, we wouldn't be able to make the other parts possible. And mm. uh, I, I just can't understate how important it is to find people that, you know, fit your vision for, for whatever business you're running and uh, make sure that they stick around. You know, that's paramount. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that has to be. And it's also, you know, with business and, but also with, you know, with life finding the people mm. that surround yourself with people that, that are, you know, that love your goals and your dreams and your aspirations. I mean, that, that's so yeah. important because they're going to push you to be a better you, you know? Yeah, absolutely. So awesome. Um, that being said, yeah, let's, let's move to director. So you're a cool. part of the company. We established that. Um, how did that all become, were, were you there for that process of it starting and all of that or no? So I, I came in later. They, okay. they got started two years before I moved to, uh, to North Dakota. Okay. Um, but one of the first events that Thunder Coffee had um, was Ice House of Palooza, which they're a gym right next to Drecker's space currently. Um, we were set up there doing nitro cold brew for that event. We were set up next to these, these guys with this really cool logo and they were all really cool guys. We had chatted with them. I feel like we quoted movies back and forth. They were, (laughs) they were big movie buffs and, uh, yeah, I got to know those guys pretty well at that, at event. And that ended up being the director crew. And I was kind of in the, in the spot personally that I needed some extra cash, uh, cause we were still only doing mobile events. So needed some way to pay the bills and, in April of 2018, and so we'd been rolling for about five months there. Yep. Um, I I remember hearing about their uh, their beer, the Night Man Cometh, which is a it's always sunny reference. So I made an it's always sunny referenced cover letter 
uh, for my resume and turned that in. And I was, I was, I was for certain that that yeah. was not going to work. I was like, they're going to toss this in the trash <laughs> as soon as they see this. But, uh, no, they, they gave me a shot and I started bartending there and, uh, you know, fell in love with, with craft beer and got, got to make some great friends there. And I've been there for, gosh, what is that? Almost four years now <laughs> Wow! after, yeah. after that. So it, it's been a good fit. Um, I've loved every minute of, of getting to serve beer, getting to take beer down to Minneapolis, um, and be a part of like the bigger craft beer scene. That's got, yeah, that's gotta be helpful. Plus connections, you know, all of that stuff. So what are some like main things that you've kind of learned that you've, that you've taken away from being with Brecker? Yeah. Drecker. <laughs> My bad. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, no, you're good. Gosh, there's, there's so much that I've learned in my time at Drecker. Uh, I've been really lucky to uh, get to see kind of the, the inner workings or, you know, like how the owners there work. And that's been really helpful for me as an owner of my own company is, mm-hmm. is learning from them, not only like the things that they do well, but, you know, they would say this as well, but, you know, some of their mistakes that they've made, uh, I think that's some of my favorite things to hear people talk about is like the things that they would yes. never do again. Yeah. <laughs> um, and that, that has helped us insanely. And I mean, not only that, but like getting to meet some of the people that, that they work with has, has helped us as far as like selling coffee to places in Minneapolis and um, you know, getting to make some of those connections and see how another similar craft industry works um, and how we can take the things that work really well in that industry and applying to specialty coffee has been super helpful. That's gotta be. Yeah. That's amazing. Um, and then beefcakes, right? Is that like the slow, is that actually the name of it? That's the name. Yeah. Very Follow cool. us on Very Instagram cool. beefcakes.nd. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't speak what the uh, other beefcakes on Instagram yeah. um, are posting, but mine, mine is premium burger content premium it is i've looked at it it looked really <laughs> good i really want one um yeah so how did how did that kind of just come about like you said i mean you just love i can tell that you just love making stuff and making shit taste good but uh, how, <laughs> how did you uh how did you get into that then gosh um man i could i could tell the whole cheesy story about you know <laughs> my my mom loves burgers so that was something that we had always cook at home Mm -hmm. uh those were like special nights for us when we do burgers and homemade french fries um that probably has something to do with it additionally oklahoma has its own style of burger named after it the oaky style onion burger Mm. um and i i fell in love with those while i was there and didn't realize how important they would be to me later on and then you know over quarantine you get a lot of phone time and with a lot of screen time you get to see <laughs> you know how people are doing things on in bigger cities that you know you you didn't realize were as cool as they were so that was that was kind of where beefcakes came about was me scrolling instagram finding places like smash burger la or yeah. gold burger also in la um, or this other uh, burger burger shop in Korea that I follow now that follow oh, wow. we're Korea. mutuals. We, we, we like each other's stuff back and forth. That's pretty um, cool. Yeah. Yeah. No, like falling in love with like the, the stuff that they were putting out. And, um, I would throw that on my Instagram story and get messages from people like, wow, that looks so good. That looks so good. And I was like, I can make this, this is pretty easy. Like it's, you know, ground beef on a hot skillet. Yeah. Top it with onions, you know? So I I started making my own and, uh, February of, of 2021, I ate a lot of burgers and it just kind of snowballed from there (laughs) where I started making them for friends. And they're like, this, this should be a thing. You should, you should try this out. And with my previous experience of, uh, you know, doing mobile events with Thunder Coffee, it just seemed, seemed really doable actually. So i I got a little black blackstone mobile griddle and uh, just started making burgers for my friends. And that's, that's how that got kicked off. That's awesome. I love those blackstone grills. My dad got one recently and he takes that thing everywhere he goes. They're so it, legit. They're, it's awesome. They're a blast to cook on. And they, you know, the, the use of high heat cooking is just primo. It is. Yeah. I cooked, uh, 
when I was in Arizona over um, Christmas break and stuff like that, I uh, I cooked Phillies on there. Oh, yes. Yep. So, That'd yeah, those good. things, those things are beautiful. But yeah. Um, <laughs> so with with all of these, you know, little adventures and stuff, I mean, it's got to be. It, you know, like you said, you have a passion for it and and you love doing it. But I mean, where do you think like what helps you like in the mm-hmm. moment for mm-hmm. for waking up every day? Those motive like just motivation. And in, in your drive, like each day, like yeah. what kind of keeps you in check? Like are there certain things that you do, you know, what just really helps you go throughout the week of all these things and not get overwhelmed and be like, okay, oh, I gotta take care of this, 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 you know, stuff, just mm-hmm. daily routine stuff. Well, you know, the craziest thing about that is I'm not a superhuman by any means. And I would, I'd yeah. be lying. I'd be lying if I said otherwise, right. There are definitely those days where, you know, getting up and going to do a mobile event sucks. There are those 3 a.m. wake-ups that suck. But, you know, the payoff is you're, you're building that culture. You're building that dream. You're working for yourself. You're providing these cool experiences for people. One of the memories that, like, jumps out to me every time I get kind of discouraged about, you know, how things are for the month or, you know, waking up early for the 10th day in a row, you know, when those things kind of start to pile on is there's this, you know, a grandma that comes into our cafe pretty regularly and she brings her two grandchildren in and they get a thunder bar and they try something new on the menu every time they're there. And for the rest of those kids' lives, we're going to be, a a fixture in their memory and we get to have a space for them to gather and grow up with their grandmother. Like that's the coolest thing. The fact that they, they choose to come there and that's a part of their routine is just so special to me that I, I hope I never, ever, ever, ever forget what that feels like. And uh, that makes those hard wakeups a lot easier. Yeah. You're a part of their lives. I never even thought about that. Like how, day to day, you know, you probably affect so many people. You're the first thing they probably do in the morning. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm like, we're, we're just so lucky. I think about that with all of our regular regulars, really. Mm -hmm. I love, I love getting to hop back on bar as often as I can now, because you get to see these people that, you know, they're out there working every day too. You know, they're, they're crushing what they're doing, but I get to be a part of that because I serve them you know, this little brown liquid that comes from the other side of the earth. You know, yeah. I, I, I can't understate how cool of a feeling that is. How special is that? Especially since you're involved in all the processes. I mean, it, everything comes from, you know, you roast your own uh, flavors and, and, and then you, you know, you make the coffee some days. It's like that, that's so, yeah. it's surreal. It really is like, you gotta be so grateful for that because, it just kind of makes me happy, honestly, thinking about it too, because it's, it's, it's crazy. Probably how many people that you affect that you don't even know, you know what I mean? Like you oh, don't yeah. know every single morning, like they have that coffee for them and it's just, yeah. Wow. That's really it's, cool. It's a super humbling experience. And then like thinking about the fact that coffee does come from the other side of the world. Uh, most times, like a lot of my favorite coffees are from Africa right now. Okay. The fact that I'm lucky enough to live in a time where I can buy coffee from farmers that are doing really awesome things over there. And I can, Mm -hmm. I can know that they're being paid a living wage and then get that coffee and then get to roast it and then get to serve it. Um, That's just the coolest feeling in the world. Wow. Yeah. That's gotta be, (laughs) that's gotta be really, really nice. (laughs) Oh man, this conversation has been awesome. Like seriously, yeah. Dexter, it's been really, really good. Um, I wanted to kind of jump into this. Okay. So this is a little secret for you. I mean, everybody now, cool. but uh, mm-hmm. this is the first episode of season two. Um, oh, tight. Yeah. So some things are changing with that, but at the very end, which we're, we are at, um, uh, I wanted to ask you three questions. Cool. 
and you're just going to try to respond, obviously, to the best capabilities that you can. And you can keep them short. You can keep them long, whatever you want to do. Cool. Um, but, yeah, I just definitely want to say I could talk to you for hours on hours on minutes because <laughs> it's, it's, you got a lot of different experiences and adventures that you're on. And it's cool, too, because you have, you have drive and you're, and you're not – you know, you're a doer. Like a lot of people are probably, you know, listening to this podcast, not listening to podcasts are, are thinking about these things. And that's why I hope, you know, listening to this, if you're thinking about doing something, you know, it doesn't matter what the business is like, like do it. You know what I mean? Like yeah, you, you did absolutely. it. Like you're yeah. there. It's, it's so surreal, but all right. So the first question, what is a daily habit that has changed your life or perspective or both? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Daily habit. Um, gosh, the biggest thing for me is in the last, the last couple months, I've really tried to cup and taste new coffees every day. That's one of my goals for the, for the year is to have a new coffee every month for sure that I haven't roasted and then cupping my own coffees as often as possible. We, mm. we do it uh, for every single batch that we roast, um, that has been invaluable for me. So just being a part of the stuff that I'm making, you know, yeah. not allowing it to get away from me, um, that, that has really leveled up the quality of coffee that, that we've been providing and has increased my skill as a coffee roaster, I would say tenfold because, you know, there, there were a lot of times starting up that, um, you just kind of had to hope it was good because, we didn't have enough green coffee for me to pull samples and time really for mm-hmm. me to pull samples, cup those coffees and uh, still be able to get product out the door. And you're like, well, I hope, hope this is good, but we're, and you know, 90% of the time I, it probably was just fine. It's that like yeah. roaster perfection chasing <laughs> thing. Yep. Being able to taste every single thing that comes out of my machine is, has really leveled up my skill and the coffees that we're putting out. Very cool. And you in cupping, you mean like just, you mean actually making like from, I just don't know what oh, do you mean. Oh, like- totally. So cupping is the standard process for evaluating coffee. Okay. And uh, usually you just pull like a, depending on the size of your cupping vessel, you take your sample of coffee, grind it up, sniff the dry aroma. Okay. Add water break the, there'll be a little crust on the top. You break that, evaluate the aroma once it's wet, then you let it cool Mm. and uh, taste it there. And uh, you, you score it um, out of a hundred points. I see. Yeah. Okay. Try and pick up on those flavor notes and, and just see how the coffee is reacting to uh, what you did to it in the roaster the other day. So that's really, that's really cool. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Number two, how would you consider your purpose in life right now? Yeah. Like, like I said earlier in the, in the interview, I think my purpose is making shit taste good. Um, and right now I'm really cheesed about burgers and I, I hope that that isn't the end. I, yeah. I really, I really love being able to provide a positive food or beverage experience for people. And I think, I think burgers is just me dipping my toes in the water to that. Cause, uh, um, it's just so fun ha- making something for people that they're like, wow, this is really good. Um, and I, I want to keep chasing that high. That's yep. I love that. I love that. Making <laughs> shit taste good. All right. Number <laughs> three is the last one. What's something, you know, that you wish others understood or no, like, so anything, it could be deep, not deep, anything like that. Well, I think this, this one is really practical for, for business owners. Um, and that is pay the people that are good at what they do to do what they're good at. Don't fret about the stuff that you're not good at. Mm. Like for us, uh, recently we've, we've finally hired on an accountant to, uh, take care of our accounting. You know, whenever, whenever we needed professional looking photos for our catering setup, you know, we paid, uh, a photographer that was really good at what they do. Um, shout out Morgan Schleif of M. Schleif Photography um, to, <laughs> to make us look really good. And that yeah. finding those people that were chasing their dream all, alongside you and uh, being able to lift them up, that has been so invaluable to us um, and saved us a lot of headache because there were times that we didn't do that and we definitely suffered for it. Again, making that, bringing people together, community. Yeah. You know? helping each other out. 
That's awesome. Well, Dexter, yeah. thank you so much. And I just want to say everybody out there listening, please go to Thunder Coffee. Uh, check it out <laughs> and yeah. uh, go taste some of the roast that's happening. Yeah. Yeah. Heck yeah. Thanks for having me on, Cade. This was a lot of fun chatting with you. Um, definitely check us out at the at the coffee shop, 300 Cheyenne Street in West Fargo, North Dakota. Follow us on Instagram, thunder.coffee. Follow us on Facebook, thunder.coffee. Or uh, yeah, order some coffee on our website, thunder.coffee, and try it out at home. Perfect. Yep. Thank you so much, Dexter. I really appreciate your time. Heck yeah. All right. Peace.